is I'm sorry how my video is, but, but I'm just the old man. I'm trying to read about uh, uh, aircraft something because I'm sitting at home in my low apartment always. And and I'm soon 860, so if I like to know more about anything, I need to try to do it now because I'm soon uh, 860 and 870. I'm end of my life. Yes, we need to wait. Cannot click anything. This stupid interviews do this one ten thousand times. It pops up. Do this and interrupt every every time I'm going to click something. All this pops up ten thousand times. So now we can close. Go back to find uh, the Boeing. And that was the Boeing uh, 3. Now my computer is weird, so we have to read from the top. Yes, we have to read from there. Yes, I'm sorry for this weird uh, video, but I like to read it. And I like to have it on my YouTube channel, because but I already have it because I read it about it two weeks ago. But I read so much else. I am going because I need to make a video in English about it. But it's two weeks ago I read this. So I have to read it again because I cannot remember all this. So we have... Uh, So, we have to read from the top, and I will try to stay awake. I don't think this is not boring, I really like to read it. This is, but I'm always so sleepy and tired, so I have to keep trying. The 737 to 200 was brought into service by United Airlines on April 28, 1968. Several Canadian airlines still use its 737 to 200 due to its gravel runway capabilities. The Boeing unpaved strip kit, gravel kit, included a gravel deflector on the nose gear and a vortex dissipator extending from the front of the engine dot respectively dash 100 s dot 17 31 the 737 to 200 advanced became the production standard in june 1971 dot 32 boeing also provided the 737 dash 200 c combi which allowed for conversion between passenger and cargo use and the 737-200QC quick change, which facilitated a rapid conversion between roles. The 1,095th and last delivery of a minus 200 series aircraft was in August 1988 to Zeman Airlines.1-33-19737-200S. Designated T-43, were used to train aircraft navigators for the U.S. Air Force. Some were modified into CT-43S, which are used to transport passengers, and one was modified as the NT-43 radar test bed. The first was delivered on the 31st of July, 1973, and the last on the 19th of July, 1974. The Indonesian Air Force ordered three modified 737-200S designated Boeing 737-2X9 surveillor. They were used as maritime reconnaissance, MPA, 
forward slash transport aircraft, fitted with SLAMMAR, side looking multi mission airborne radar. The aircraft were delivered between May 1982 and October 1983. 34, after 40 years, in March 2008, the final 737 to 200 aircraft in the U.S. flying scheduled passenger service were phased out with the last flights of Aloha Airlines. 35, as of 2018, the variant still saw regular service through North American charter operators such as Sierra Pacific Airlines. 36 with the improved short field capabilities of the 737-200, Boeing offered the option of the gravel kit modification features preventing foreign object damage, which enables this aircraft to operate on remote, unimproved or unpaved runways, such as gravel runways, that other similarly sized jetliners cannot dot. 37 until retiring its minus 200 fleet in 2007. Alaska Airlines used this option for some of its Comb aircraft rural operations to serve many unimproved runways in Alaska. 38, 39. Gravel kitted 737 to 200 Combis are still used by Canadian North, which is due to retire their last one in early 2023. 40, Air Inuit. Nolino Aviation and Crono Aviation in Northern Canada where gravel runways are common daughters of October 2020. There were 77 Boeing 737-200S in service. 41, 737 Classic, second generation. The Boeing 737 Classic is the name given to the 737-300 forward slash 400 forward slash 500 series after the introduction of the 600 forward slash 700 forward slash 800 forward slash 900 series of the Boeing 737 family. 42 produced from 1984 to 2000. A total of 1,988 classic series were delivered. 43, close to the next major upgrade of single aisle aircraft at Airbus and Boeing. The price of jet fuel reached a peak in 2008, when airlines devoted 40% of the retail price of an air ticket to pay for fuel, versus 15% in 2000. 44, 45, consequently, in that year. Carriers retired Boeing 737 classic aircraft to reduce fuel consumption. Replacements consisted of more efficient 737 next generation or a 320 family aircraft. On the 4th of June, 2008, United Airlines announced it would retire all 94 of its classic 737 aircraft. 64 737 to 337 137 to 500 aircraft replacing them with a 320 family jets take this on the leader break I will read uh, this finish the chance became cornered but I have a flight I will follow maybe 